guys welcome back to my channel my name is damesho and i create content on lifestyle vlogs marriage and everything in between i'm a nigerian youtuber based in canada presently in kitchener ontario and in this video i've come to share with you my canada journey how i got into this country where it started from where it, where how we process the whole journey um i did this i got on this journey with my husband but it's not yet to share his own side of the story so if you're interested in this kind of video please definitely keep on watching welcome back if you are returning thank you for coming back you're welcome yet again if you are here and you haven't subscribed, please kindly do so. Press the subscribe button down below and the notification bell beside it so you get notified every time your girl posts a video. And for those of you that are coming for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate you. Please do the needful. Don't go, don't leave here without subscribing to my channel and liking my video. Please. So now let's get into the story of how I got into Canada. So it's a long story that i would compress into a few minutes because i don't want to bore you with my struggles on this journey so basically we started this journey 2017 precisely i'm not sure the month but 2017 that was when my that was when my husband did his west um to evaluate his results and that was when he started writing ielts so he wrote one IELTS in 2017, but yeah, um, he didn't make, he didn't get the required score. So if you know what the CRS score is like here, um, you have masters, your score in IELTS, your age, if you have family in Canada, if you have a job offer, if you have a provisional nomination, a lot of things, I'll do that video, a lot of things compresses on what your CRS score would do being but at that point what was stopping us from going on the journey was his ielts result he wasn't getting what he was supposed to get here so he did one in 2017 <laughs> and 2018 he did another one and then at that point we were married you were we were just you know yeah no we we're still in the relationship but we knew we had a goal of relocating together so the goal was okay you start and when it falls through you will add me into the application that was the plan so 2017 he wrote it he didn't make 2018 he wrote it he didn't so we decided to um we decided i start my own journey too so i wrote my west i'm sorry so i did my um evaluation and i wrote my IELT results so i didn't do west because i'm a professional um i studied law so i'm a lawyer so lawyers have a different platform or different evaluating body so i did i used iqas that's what it's called international qualification something something, something. so i used iqas my case came back after five months so i did it in i applied specifically remember that i applied in september and it came out in march so it took about five months but i wrote my ielts in at the end of October, <laughs> your girl big baggy. <laughs> I didn't get the required score. In short, I got the barest minimum because I wasn't ready, I wasn't prepared, but I just did it anyways because you know there was a journey ahead. But I didn't put my all into that exam, I never lie. But I did it anyways. I did MOD, yes, I did MOD the first and second time my husband did, he did British Council. So back to our journey so I, so I didn't make it now just waiting for my um uh, um my iqs to come out so that i rewrite the west so now i rewrite the IELTS. so now this is 2018 march in 2018 february my husband then boyfriend did no then he had become a fiance because we got engaged in, in october so he wrote the ielts exam again in february same story so that's the third one no in 2018 he wrote two in 2017 he wrote one in 2018 he wrote two in 2019 january 
no sorry my bad in 2017 he wrote one in 2018 he wrote three in 2019 february he wrote one and same old story in, and it was just one because there are like four um four aspects to the exam the speaking the writing the reading and the listening and he was always smashing the others it was just the writing it would get 6.5 and you're supposed to get seven. You will remark kids. I think that time you remark it was 15 kids. Same old story, the scores will not change. That was February, right? And then in August, so we got married in August. And in July, he wrote another one. I didn't even know he wrote this particular exam. I didn't even know he wrote it. Was to use it as <laughs> wedding kids. <kids. laughs> as in like, oh, surprise, see what I did. And Ella. <laughs> It still didn't make it. And I'm laughing now, but it wasn't funny back then, guys. So, he wrote another one in 2018. Oh, July. June, July. Just before the wedding. No, it was July. And same more story, he didn't make it. Don't forget that at this point, I had my own. Sure, I didn't have profile. When I did not pass, I didn't bother writing, um, opening a profile because, you know, there were requirements to open one so i didn't meet the requirements i just fashioned it and i kept on believing in him that you can do this for us it's for the family <laughs> so um july he didn't make it again and at that point there was already six i don't know six yes yeah, six exams at that point i don't know if i'm calculating it right but at that point maybe he wrote two in 2017 he's not yet to give his own story i guess he believe that anyways at that point he had written six six exams and um in september after the wedding in august in september he wrote another one and it was same old story so after he wrote the um seventh one and it was the same story he abandoned that profile yeah and opened another one okay so the reason why we're aiming for that score that i'm telling you guys is because um to we were aiming for um federal nomination federal express entry and to be qualify for federal you have to have some certain scores so that was what we were aiming for that time at this point my sister had come into canada we had extra 15 marks but we still needed that point five to get into the federal space but we didn't get it so at that point he left the single wood application and um opened a new um, profile and added me as a spouse guys less than two weeks after he added me as a spouse i kid you not less than two weeks that he added me as a spouse alberta said my people we love you come here <laughs> It was, it was joy unlimited for us because I mean we have been chasing a particular route for what three years, and it didn't fall through, and it just looked like this dream was becoming a fail. What I'm going to do? Because you know um, the nomination, the province nomination, it wasn't really a thing that you go for, they come for you. And you can't really base your journey on that because, you know, it's not certain like, like the federal that when you get some particular score, you get into it. So long and short, they called us to come into their, <laughs> into their province. They gave us, um, they sent him or they sent us at that point because if not for me, that was added into the application. So they sent notification of interest. We accepted it. We they sent some series of applications to fill. We filled that. So we're supposed to print out the forms, um, fill it up, and send the ad copy to them in Alberta. So we did that, filled it up, marveled all our life together to make sure that we got the application right. And um, I was coming into Canada at that point. Oh, along the line, I we got um, Canada um, visa. So I was coming in alone, so I brought the documents and sent to Alberta. So it was faster, yeah, unlike when if I had sent it through Lagos. So um, that was October ending. So by like the first week or so in November, they've already 
giving us feedback that oh, they've gotten our application they are working on it to reach out to us in december they sent an update that okay along the line they sent um additional document they requested for salary accounts just to be sure that you know i don't know whatever the child requested for salary accounts in december they sent an update that oh that we are qualified for the nomination but they've passed their quota for the year but we'll be in the first batch of recipients in january and they specifically told us january 15 or 16 i think 16 and exactly january 16 we received our our baton nomination certificate it was mind-blowing at that point i knew that i've arrived this was 2020 yeah permit me if i'm missing the dates this was 2020 so in my head i'm like ah by december 2020 you know i'll get it going but wait for my story so we got the nomination we uploaded it into our portal the portal that has the both of us the profile rather that has the both of us uploaded it they gave us 600 scores additional we had over 1000 at this point you know if we, if we were allowed, like, not been dashing people, people that needed five marks, ten marks, I don't mean dashing people, but anyways, we had over a thousand scores, so we automatically got the federal nomination. So, this is the flip side. So, because it was um, a province that um, showed interest in us, we were aligned to that province, but we, was, we still have to go through federal. So, after the provincial nomination, we got federal nomination we submitted our application so if you watch my last video where i was talking about police report medicals and putting all of our, our application together um because i didn't include at the end of the day guys that my iqs certification that i did i didn't use it i don't wasted about what over maybe one thing that time anyways i didn't i didn't need to provide my cv work experience so i didn't need to provide ielts i didn't need to provide um evaluation results so every all of the documentation was for me that means it was the principal applicant so there's something called the principal applicant the person that is in front of the application the person that is actually applying and then i became this I became his dependent so if you have a family of five um your husband or your wife can be the applicant can be the principal applicant depending on how you guys are able to sort your scores and any every other thing so it was the principal applicant we did our we did our um medicals in march March 16, yes, March 16 to be precise. We did our medicals at this point. We already had all our documentation because it was the same documentation that we need to submit here that we submitted for the um nomination. So we got it was easy. The only thing we just needed to do was medicals and POF and police reports. So we did everything together. We did our medicals March 16 and we got we submitted march 17. so at this point the timeline was six months so our timeline six months yeah so our six months was ending in september or backtrack after we submitted literally like a week two weeks after the whole world shut down on us because corona came visiting <laughs> it was a bloody nightmare the oh you know at this point we didn't know it was a nightmare yet so we waited we we're thinking ah six months because i know a lot of people that did three months it's just specifically my sister did six months and give or take seven months so we we're thinking ah uh, six seven eight months max so i've like, gotten our this thing that for sure for sure for sure we're doing christmas in <laughs> canada <laughs> gosh <laughs> guys it wasn't funny so because of the covid lockdown restriction and everything we were able to do our biometrics which came in like a month after we submitted give or take like maybe less than a month yeah but we were able to do it so we did it in september 8th to be precise so i was thinking that oh like i was having faith like 
like maybe like one week after we do our biometrics because we heard of people that you you get that did their biometrics and they got their ppr almost immediately so we're thinking oh our case is gonna be different december 2020 <laughs> let me never tell you about how our rent was to expire october and we had i don't know what we were thinking we we're thinking that we're not going to pay that rent <laughs> Well, so we not told our landlord that um, we wanted to pay like half year. <laughs> we didn't tell him why. We told him we wanted to pay half year. I'm like, okay, he was like, oh, no problem. Now I don't mind. We're paying half year because we're not going to stay till the old year now. So that way we paid half year and we're hoping that give or take by October we will get something. After October, we moved our give or take to December, to November. After November, we say okay, maybe December. We're sure moving in like by month, monthly, monthly. Okay, so by like January, February, made up mind that okay, let's pay our balance of our rent <laughs> because it did look like it was coming. So at this point, we're just hanging there. But when it became one year, March 17, it wasn't. It was lo no longer getting funny. It was now becoming frustrating, guys. I cannot explain to you how frustrating do you know what it means to wait for something that you have done everything i mean we all know they are going to give they they really reject a um a canada permanent residency application except your situation is really bad do you get so the it wasn't a case of would they give us or would they not give us we knew for sure we're going to get it like <laughs> we knew for sure and when it got to June, I was like totally frustrated, like totally, totally, totally frustrated because at this point they started giving people. You know the sad, 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 sad part for us was apparently people that submitted. So March was the last set of people that submitted before the pandemic here. Yeah? So the pandemic came and they were in lockdown till August. So they started up at um accepting application i think in august or september you guys will you believe that people that submitted after the lockdown was released it was a three four months timeline for them as in i kid you not they were giving people in a breeze three months two months you get so it was frustrating seeing that a lot of people that submitted after us were getting theirs in no time so what's delaying us i was at this point i was already getting worried so i told my husband that we should do what we call um there's something i can't remember the name there's something that yeah you can do you can apply for so check like the status of your application i'll put the name here i'm sorry um so we my husband didn't want to do it he was like let's just wait let's just wait for when they are ready they'll give us i'm like hello i'm ready they should give me is it on my readiness that my class so we applied for that by the time the results came out that one took like maybe like six weeks so i think we got it in if we applied in june that means we got it in end of july so when we saw everything was good you know because in the in the reports they'll tell you there will be like a comment from the person or like a remark so on the remark, it was saying like we we're on good standing, that everything was good. So I'm not like everything is good. So why are you not giving us our application? It's not funny again. Our rent is expiring again in October. So wow, we've why have we not gotten our PPR? You know, a lot of people that were a lot of people had gone in three months, two months. See, and, as in it was a breeze at that point. They were giving people that submitted after us was very very frustrating and then in december of 2021 november december of 2021 at this point we had to pay rent again we had you know we had to pay rent again we didn't even i was still of the opinion that we should pay half rent but my husband was like hell no we're going to pay this rent because it wasn't the pressure we put on ourselves of hoping the last time that we're not going to pay the wasn't funny so he was hell bent on paying the full rent so I allowed, I said, okay, let's pay, let's pay. So we paid our full rent and moved on. He moved on. I didn't move on. <laughs> he has always, he's, he, he has always been 
a believer of they will give us when they are ready but me i'm not a believer of nothing <laughs> i'm a believer of i'm ready to go they should answer me in short i still had hope that i was going to do christmas in canada in 2021 <laughs> it's not funny gosh look, looking back at it now i was so frustrated i remember specifically that when we clocked six months in the application that was september 2021 i cried i was sad sorry that was september 2022 and um, 2020 rather i was sad as in i was broken i don't know why i was that sad because they did not tell me that they would give the way i was disappointed it was as if no they told me that they would give me september let's say september 15 2020 and that thing that day came by and they didn't give me that's how disappointed i was like like a promise a, a, a failed promise that's how i felt but you know after that day in as much as i was giving my life based on relocating i was doing it's not like i was stagnant and not doing life and not making money but i was still very much invested into the old i'll soon go guys i can't even begin to tell you how many things i was supposed to do that i'll say i'll soon go so if you're out there and you are um planning on relocating i beg you in as much i know it's hard to say easier to say than to follow but please do not base your life on this journey i know i know we all want to come to canada but please live your life accordingly when it comes it comes because you'll be frustrated i don't want anybody to go through the frustration that i went through in those two years yes we waited for two years let me continue my story so in december of 2021 when i did not um get my dream of doing christmas in canada specifically so a lot of people had started um um reapplying for their medical so medicals last for one year as expired in july but we're still giving a lot of people even after their medicals have expired so out of the opinion that let's not do let's see let's wait for them to come through but a lot of people were reapplying for medical so that they they are not left hanging so we in in at end of november or maybe like the first week no it was at the end of november or a few days in the beginning of december we applied we paid for our remedicals so you can do we call it up <laughs> we used to call it upfront medical so we paid for upfront medicals and we're hoping that we'll do so they gave us appointment for january we weren't really bothered because now see we had like an appoint like a request for medical so we left it in january january 4 to be january 8th to be, i think so december 6 came and we got a mail to go for our medicals again so that was that's what is called remedicals so because our medical has expired canada has a rule that if you if you're not if you don't get an extension your medical you have to be physically fit all these kind of things before you come into the country so we did our remedicals um we got our remedicals we called q life the body we did it with and told them to reschedule us come january 2022 we did our medicals january 4 and it was the deadline was january 6 but we did it for and in like 10 days we got our updates that we passed our medicals another problem if you don't if you don't pass your medicals you're going to redo it that's another problem with a lot of people um you it's just it's not like it's not like like you're banned but they just need to see that you are physically fit like you don't have a communicable disease that you are, that um that when you come here you're going to like spread to other people so for example if you did your medicals and you failed because you had like traces of tuberculosis or something they'll just tell you to redo it and treat you as in the body that is the body that is licensed to do medical so they would treat you so you'll be on a number of weeks treatment and after that you you do so you just redo keep on redoing your medical till you pass it basically that was it anyways so january 6 january 4 we did our medicals 10 days after we got a update that an update that we passed our medicals oh we're excited <laughs> and 
we continued living the life i mean at this point it was a sure banker that we were receiving it in about a month i kid you not because that was like the trend aside the fact that it was the trend well yeah it was a trend a lot of things were based on trend so we were sure at this point i'm, I'm like oh, it's canada oh, it's canada <laughs> it was so sure so golden meal came february 3rd 2022 that was like less than a month yeah less than a month after we did our medical so we were excited guys let me give you a brief story of how my husband told me so i was at home i was working um yes i was working and he was sleeping in the sitting room he was sleeping and then he woke up and he came to me and said if they give you your canada visa today when will you go i said i'll go tomorrow and he left me and he went to the room or something after a few minutes he came back and said baby help me look at this thing i'm like what's that please leave me i'm busy because i had like a deadline leave me i'm busy can you just look at it and i looked at it i'm like i'm like what's this i asked now what's this <laughs> he said don't look at this i said oh my god guys i cried i don't know if i should put that video yet because it was such an embarrassing video <laughs> Where I cried, I cried out of excitement, out of a long wait, guys. It took one year, ten months, and two weeks. Gosh, it was a long, frustrating period. You guys, it was frustrating. If you experienced this, or you know someone that experienced the crazy wait with RLCC, please put it in the comment section. It was a crazy wait. But we thank the Lord. It came February 3rd, like February 5th. We packed our passport, everything, everything, sent it to Accra, sent to Accra. 17 days after our passport came back to us. I'm sure you guys are, must have seen the video where I received our passport on behalf of my husband. He wasn't at home. So you can, I'll link it here or in the description box. It was relocated to Canada part one. Ah, it was exciting. But Adam, from like February third, um, that we got our pastor I started preparing for. Oh, what are we taking? I started sorting out my load and all that. All of that is in that vlog. Go and watch it. And I uh, what we a week before we received our passport because um, when you send your application, when they stamp your passport with the visa, you would know it's something called the counter for it. So when we saw a counter for it, we're excited. Now, this is reality. Bought tickets. Okay, we're going. So, so, so. We got our PPR February 3rd, 2022. And we landed in Canada. March 19, 2022. was a dream come true. Guys, this was a journey of five years. Five whole years. 2017 to 2022. It was a frustrating journey. I wish you guys that want to come to Canada. I wish what you want for yourself that is come to pass. But please, while you are waiting, be patient. Because there's something that... I got out of this journey. It is patience. RCC will teach you patience. RCC is the body that controls this immigration process. They will teach you patience because you would not hear anything from them. They will not give you any updates. I know people that waited three years on this journey, submitted the application. Three years they were waiting. The only thing that will give you updates is that process. I still cannot remember the name. Aside that, or maybe they want a document from you, which is very rare. You will not get an update. You will not six months straight you will not hear from them in short guys 20 2020 2021 january till we got the um medicals we medicals december 2021 we didn't hear anything from them no updates no ghost updates nothing nothing it's my husband that i even pity because he was the one that was in charge of that i said i didn't want to have access to it because Palpitation will not allow me to rest. So it was the one checking it. There was a time the trend was it was like 5 a.m. in the morning they were giving. Another thing, oh my gosh, was our visa office. We had we were in the Accra visa office. And Accra is known to be slow. Gosh, it was frustrating. We used to put everybody in my group, we used to put Accra in prayers. It was crazy. But later we found out that. It was COVID? Of course, the old excuse was COVID because, to be fair, to be truly, truly, truly fair, 
the mask used to be before COVID was seven months. So to be fair, it was COVID because they now stopped working in the office, they're working from home and in the a lot of the accessibility to documents were in the portal in the office. They could not access it at home. So a lot of oh it was a crazy journey. So 2017 to 2022 is my provisional nomination journey from Lagos, Nigeria to Canada. And like I said, it taught me patience, it taught my husband and I patience, it taught us patience. <laughs> it taught us what patience. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to be dropping a video about the process, each process um explain step by step i'll be dropping that video soon and i'll also be dropping a video and i'll also be leaving in the please drop in the comment section if you have questions about this canada journey in particular but there's a question i want to ask sir somebody sent me um somebody sent me a question and i would just like to touch on it i know i've said it in this old um story time but let me just touch on it she asked me what my ielts experience i did ielts once my husband did ielts seven times he has a better space to explain the experience but i knew it was frustrating because it was just one model that was giving the problem so it was quite frustrating he was the model on the premier applicant we didn't do french we didn't learn french we didn't need to do french at the time we started french wasn't a thing yet it was when the reason why people started doing French is because the scores kept on going high and people could not meet up. And when you write French exams, it gives you a boost in your scores. So that's why a lot of people started writing French. Yeah, we are both masters holders. He has his masters. I have my masters. That's another thing that gave him extra score. He had about I don't know how many years work experience. So he included it because it was primary applicant. We submitted our application. We submitted our notification of interest application to our batter in October 2019, and we got our um, nomination nomination certificate in January. We what? the whole process, the whole process from the beginning to the end took five years, but our submission took about two years. So that's the question the lady asked me, and I've answered. I hope I answered your question to the fullest. Have you guys enjoyed this video? Drop a comment. If you have a question for me, I'll be willing to answer. Look for me, look for me on my Instagram. I'm there. I would answer all of your questions. A lot of you have been coming to my Instagram to ask me questions. While you're coming, just please follow me. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed yet, please do the needful. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.